Our catechism recitation for this morning continues our look at the Apostles' Creed, the three articles and their meanings. On this day, the second article. What is the second article of the Apostles' Creed? And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. What does this mean? I believe that Jesus Christ, true God, begotten of the Father from eternity, and also true man, born of the Virgin Mary, is my Lord, who has redeemed me, a lost and condemned creature, purchased and won me from all sins, from death and from the power of the devil, not with gold or silver, but with his holy precious blood and with his innocent suffering and death that I may be his own, and live under him in his kingdom, and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness, even as he is risen from the dead, lives and reigns to all eternity. This is most certainly true. In our opening hymn for this morning's service, number 16 in the Lutheran hymnal, Blessed Jesus at thy word, we are gathered all to hear thee.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness. Therefore you are feared. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess to you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your punishment now and forever. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the Word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us.
The lesson for this morning continues our hearing of the great stories in the book of Genesis. On this day, Jacob prepares for his death and has this conversation with his dear son, Joseph, recently being reunited with him. And he speaks about the great blessing, not only to see Joseph, whom he thought had been long dead, but also to see his child's children, the dear grandchildren that have come from the fatherhood of Joseph. As we hear in the book of Genesis, the 47th and 48th chapters. So Israel dwelt in the land of Egypt, in the country of Goshen. And they had possessions there and grew and multiplied exceedingly. And Jacob lived in the land of Egypt 17 years. So the length of Jacob's life was 147 years. When the time drew near that Israel must die, he called his son Joseph and said to him, Now if I have found favor in your sight, please put your hand under my thigh and deal kindly and truly with me. Please do not bury me in Egypt, but let me lie with my fathers. You shall carry me out of Egypt and bury me in their burial place. And he said, I will do as you have said. Then he said, Swear to me. And he swore to him. So Israel bowed himself on the head of the bed. Now it came to pass, after these things, that Joseph was told, Indeed, your father is sick. And he took with him his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim, and Jacob was told, Look, your son Joseph is coming to you. And Israel strengthened himself and sat up on the bed. Then Jacob said to Joseph, God Almighty appeared to me at Luz in the land of Canaan and blessed me and said to me, Behold, I will make you a fruitful and multiply you and I will make of you a multitude of people, and give this land to your descendants after you as an everlasting possession. And now your two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, who were born to you in the land of Egypt before I came to you in Egypt, are mine. As Reuben and Simeon, they shall be mine. Your offspring, whom you beget after them, shall be yours. They will be called by the name of their brothers in their inheritance. But as for me, when I came from Padah, Rachel died beside me in the land of Canaan on the way, when there was but a little distance to go to Ephrath. And I buried her there on the way to Ephrath, that is, Bethlehem. Then Israel saw Joseph's sons and said, Who are these? Joseph said to his father, They are my sons, whom God has given me in this place. And he said, Please bring them to me, and I will bless them. Now the eyes of Israel were dim with age, so that he could not see. Then Joseph brought them near him, and he kissed them, and embrace them. And Israel said to Joseph, I had not thought to see your face, but in fact God also has shown me your offspring. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The epistle for this fifth Sunday after Holy Trinity is from St. Peter's first epistle in the third chapter. Pray. Finally, all of you be of one mind, having compassion for one another. Love as brothers. Be tender-hearted. Be courteous. 
not returning evil for evil or reviling for reviling, but on the contrary, blessing. Knowing that you are called to this, that you may inherit a blessing. For he who would love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. Let him turn away from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. And who is he who will harm you if you become followers of what is good? But even if you should suffer for righteousness' sake, you are blessed. And do not be afraid of their threats, nor be troubled. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. And always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Behold, O God, our shield, and look upon thy servants. O Lord God of hosts, hear our prayer. Alleluia, alleluia. In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in thy righteousness. Alleluia. We stand and join together in the gospel acclamation. Father Almighty, 
maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets, and I believe one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Our next hymn, number 544 in the Lutheran hymnal, While Yet the Morn is Breaking, we sing this to the tune of Stand Up, Stand Up for Jesus. Oh, 
Grace to you and peace from God, your Father. From the Lord Jesus Christ, his Son, our Master, and the Holy Spirit, who blesses the Word of God, that we are enabled to believe it and live it even unto life everlasting. Amen. This is the pulpit. The term is borrowed from the front of the boat, where the navigator would stand, especially in the days prior to all of the modern navigational methods, to look out for rocks and shallow waters so that the boat would not become shipwrecked from hidden dangers in the waters. Where you sit is called the nave. That comes from the Latin word for boat. Anybody connected with the United States Navy would recognize that root of that word, the name. It's the place where those who help to propel the boat and also those who are busy with the other tasks that are necessary for that boat to remain afloat and on course and carry its passengers and cargoes safely to the final destination and safe harbor. The church as a whole is called the Ark, a reminder of the great boat that God had his servant Noah make there in the midst of a desert to attract the attention of Noah's neighbors. Is he nutty? Or does he know something? And particularly as Noah continued to proclaim the word of God faithfully, to warn his neighbors of the coming judgment of God and the great flood upon the earth and the gracious invitation to come in and be saved from the stormy tumult to come. And yet there were a mere eight in that ship when the rains came pouring down. The Bible uses a lot of metaphors, not only because the people of Bible times quite well understood boats and shipping and the like. Many of them or their family members were engaged in that work, in that trade, whether building boats or skippering boats or fishing from boats. The Bible also speaks of the waters as dangerous. Indeed, they are. This is in a time when modern life preservers are not available. And truly, that old adage, either sink or swim, was truly a life-saving word. The Bible uses the deep and the depths of the oceans as symbolic for the realm of death. And so all of this comes together in this episode in which Jesus comes to the lake of Gennesaret and asks Peter, to put his boat out in a little bit into the water so that Jesus might teach from it, allowing that to become a natural amphitheater 
for his voice and his word to be amplified by the effect of the water so that the great crowd of people there on shore could hear him. As well as those men in the boat, particularly Simon Peter. After Jesus has preached and taught for a bit, he speaks to Peter. Go out into the deep and let your nets down for a catch. Peter and his brother Andrew, together with their partners James and John, are very experienced fishermen. Now they certainly recognize, because they are experienced, that it is called fishing, not catching, for a reason. They've worked all night. And they've caught nothing. They've hung it up for the day, literally hanging their nets out to dry so that they're ready for the next night. But there was something in the word that Jesus spoke from that pulpit of that boat that caused Peter to be moved. Master. Modern sensibilities are telling us we're not supposed to use that word anymore. But that word has nothing to do with slavery in this context. But it's rather speaking the one who stands before his disciples and teaches them. It's master teacher. And so Peter, master teacher, we were fishing all night, caught nothing. They're not here in this area. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. Jesus was not teaching them anything about fishing when he spoke from that boat. But Peter heard how the word of God blesses all of the tasks that we accomplish in this life to work to God's glory, to bless our neighbors through our own service at the time, and likewise to edify and build up ourselves in the faith. Everything, fishing, watching the cargo, watching children, studying, hoeing, irrigating, everything that we do There is no menial task in the kingdom of God. All of it, God works to provide daily bread for you, for your family, for your community, for the world, particularly as we work together using our own individual skills and talents in the places that God himself has sent us and placed us to do every little thing is blessed by God through his word for his people. Everything. And that's how God's people live. This is what gives meaning to every little thing we do. Every detail of your life is blessed. Our times of idleness become times of refreshment and rest, especially as we use those moments to meditate upon the word of God 
and to pray, Lord, what next? Every little detail of your life continues to be guided by the master of the universe. He who created the fish continues to keep them at his command so that what Peter accomplishes by letting down the net at the word of Jesus in the spot that he has chosen, believing that this word is effectual, no matter what the result might be. Because even in the night of fishing the previous night, though they caught nothing, they learned something as experienced fishermen always do. Perhaps noting something about the depth or learning something about the type of vegetation on the lake bottom in that area or the wind or the waves, something about the conditions of that night, making them mindful that when they see that again, they might not be wanting to be in that same spot the next time. But also this. And this was the vital lesson that Jesus is teaching Simon Peter and James and John and Andrew and you. When Jesus says it, expect it to happen. Let down your nets for a catch. There will be a catch. And indeed, there was. Causing their nets to reach the breaking point. Filling not one boat, but two. Right up to the scuppers. Vulture. But also teaching Peter about his new call. From now on, you will catch men in the very same way. Not in a net that traps them, but in a net of the gospel of the love of God that drags fishes out of polluted waters and rescues us. Bringing us through the living waters of holy baptism and cleansing us so that we continue to swim in these crystal clear, pure waters that flow from the throne of God in heaven. The living water that continues to spring forth from the heart of the Christian as we daily remember the holy baptism that we once undertook from the hand of God, but that continues to place the hand of God's blessing upon us and bless every single moment of our lives. He continues to provide for us, leading us here into this boat, knowing that it contains the food that we need, the very flesh and blood of our crucified and yet resurrected and ever-living Savior, Christ Jesus. We confess with Peter that we also are sinful men that don't deserve to be in the presence of God. And yet in the word of absolution that Jesus is here to proclaim, we are left at peace. Fear not. And he calls us then to go out into that world, cleansed, revived, empowered to do our little thing in every little detail faithfully to glorify this mighty God who works in all of these little details of all of his people to continue to do mighty things in this world 
especially to continue to send his fishermen out to seek and to save those dear poor fish still trapped in the waters of sin and death and to bless our labors to his glory, to our neighbor's blessing, to our own blessing indeed until he takes us and adds blessing upon blessing in life eternal with him and with all of his faithful ones. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We join in general prayer. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, our gracious Master, your word has been spoken in our midst. We, with our own ears, have heard you speak. And in the faith that is created by your word, gospel, we will let down our nets for a catch. We will open our hands to catch every blessing that you place into our hands during our time in this world at every single moment. We will have our eyes open to see and count every blessing, if that were possible, as you continue to enrich our lives day by day. Continue to bless us in all that we do. For we know that we have already inherited a blessing by your Father's grace on account of what you have accomplished in living for us, in dying for us, in rising again from the dead for us, so that we might have your ever-living, eternal word empowering our lives. We pray that you would continue to so bless your church in the world and that you would bless the missionary efforts of these fishers of men as you make us to be, as we all participate in this mission of catching men and women and children alive, that they might live with you even forever. We pray that you would continue to cast the net of your love and gather together all the members of our families together in an ever-enclosing circle of love. For these are the ones who are nearest and dearest to us. And we pray that you would bless not only our families, but also our circle of friends and the communities in which we are privileged to live for this time in this life. We pray that you would bless this nation, a people that you have gathered together in this land. And we pray that you would continue to bless the people of this good land, even as we have celebrated the birthday of this nation so we pray that you would renew day by day a commitment to liberty to all, justice under the rule of law for all, so that we might have peace between all people. We pray this for all nations under heaven, especially in the Ukraine, that the warfare might soon cease. And especially for Natalia and Emma, that they might find safe haven here in our good land and soon. We pray that you would grant your comfort and consolation abundantly into the lives of those who grieve and mourn over the passing of loved ones. For the family and friends of Martha, Mo, and also for the family and friends of Tom, and bless them with that peace that you alone can provide at such a time as this. We give you thanks for the gift of health and wellness 
and pray that you would continue to keep us in as good a health as possible by blessing our healthy living, by helping us to recover speedily from illness and injury. We rejoice that Carol is able to be here with us on this day and pray that you would continue to speed him along the path of recovery. We pray your blessing upon Kathy and her surgical team on the morrow, that all would go well and that she would find the relief and the restoration of health from this procedure. We pray for our dear sister Karen. You know her condition, O oh Lord, and we pray that you would continue to deal mercifully towards her and hold her in the hands of your grace. And continue this for all those for whom our continued personal prayers are raised before you each and every day, especially for our dear brethren Sherman and Sandy as well. Continue to provide for all the needs that we have. We give you thanks for the recent rains and we pray that you would continue to provide seasonable weather to bless all of the livestock and all the crops that we might enjoy in abundance at the time of harvest and go with us wherever life's journeys take us so that we might be reminded that you are always in our boat, guiding us, guarding us, and keeping us on the way to safe harbor. For again, wherever you are, we are in safety and at peace. For these and all things whatsoever you would have us ask of thee, we pray to your Father, for the sake of your bitter sufferings and death, O Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, our Lord and Savior, you who live and reign with the Father and the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> continue the order for Holy Communion at the preface. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift, lift them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right, right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you. O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God, who with thine only begotten Son and the Holy Ghost art one God, one Lord, and in the confession of the only true God, we worship the Trinity in person and the unity in substance of majesty co-equal. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine thine is the kingdom, kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Amen. Amen. Welcome to your master's table. Take and eat. This is the true body of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given unto death for all your sins. Take and eat. This is the true body of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given unto death for all of your sins. The true body of Jesus Christ, given unto death for you. Take and drink. This is the true blood of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and drink. This is the true blood of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. <coughs> Shed for the forgiveness of all of your sins. His body and his blood strengthen to keep your own flesh and blood in the one true faith and ever hearing his word until life everlasting depart in peace. Welcome. 
welcome to your master's table. Take and eat. This is the true body of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given unto death for all of your sins. blood of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ shed for the forgiveness of all of your sins. His body and blood strengthen to keep your own flesh and blood in the one true faith and ever hearing his word unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Bid your servant go in peace. upon thee, and give thee peace. Amen. Our closing hymn, number 540 in the Lutheran hymnal, With the Lord begin thy task, Jesus will direct it. Amen. 